Hello beautiful children, it's wonderful to see you in my mind's eye. We've done lots of songs for Pesach and I've done a quiz for the Seder or for Pesach um, and now we're going to focus on our uh, Pesach Seder table and our Seder plate and what will we need for our Seder table? Well we need to have matzot um, and a lot of people for their seder, they use shmura matzah, which means that it's been guarded from the moment it's been cut. The grains have been cut, so it's guarded. Um, okay, so Chloe did a beautiful matzah cover, which is quite easy to do. You take paper and you staple it, all the three sides, leaving an opening at the top. And you need one piece of paper, two, three, four. Four pieces of paper and you staple around it like that and then you see it makes a lovely matzah cover and you because we need how many matzot do we need? Three matzot. One can go in there and another one can go in there and then another one can go in there. So you have three places for matzah. And maybe mummies and daddies have a beautiful one for Pesach. Who knows? To put the matzot in. You also might want to have, Chloe did this when she was very young, you might want to decorate a pillowcase. You found me, Afi Koman, with a picture. This one was done by Chloe. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. It's a very big pillow cover and it's great fun. So if you have a spare pillow cover and you can decorate it and mummies and daddies obviously allow you to do it. You must not take a, a pillow cover without permission, but you can hide your afikom in there. That's the uh, matzah that we break into half and we hide the half. That's just a nice place to hide it. We also will need a pillow for relaxing for when we do the leaning. It's nice and comfortable for our back some pillows. So we've talked about that. We also need some salt to go in water. Now my water bottle is over there so I'm not going to go and run and get it now but we need some salty water. Okay and we also need some cups with our grape juice or our wine because we have to have four cups which each have a levy it, a small amount bigger amount for grown-ups, um, of wine for each person. And our rabbis decide that amount, so we don't need to worry about it. Okay, so I think I've said that we need the matzah. Got it? Check. We need the Haggadah. Where is the Haggadah? Ah, here it is, the Haggadah, the special book that we use to talk about Yitzhak Mitzrayim leaving Egypt. How about the Seder plate? We've done the wine, we know we need four cups. How about the Seder plate? Well, I've got lots to show you. So, let's see all different examples of Seder plates. Here's one, it's a nice, simple, easy plastic one that children can use, or maybe mummies and daddies will use, so it's easier for people to access and look at. Well, let's look at the Maror. Hmm, what am I going to use for maror? Well, here it is. Some people use very, very, very sharp horseradish for the maror. Maror, bitter herbs. We need two kazetim. We need two portions of maror per person. One to fulfill the mitzvah of maror and a second kazayis for the korech when we have it with the matzah and maror sandwich. Obviously not bread, it's matzah. And the Gemara tells us of five types of vegetables that are considered maror. The most common are the romaine lettuce and the horseradish. And here again is the maror. So there we go, we've got two horseradish and the romaine lettuce. And um, the romaine lettuce, people check to make sure that it's not infested. Okay. And so, but how come romaine lettuce? It's not bitter. I like lettuce and I've 
It's not usually bitter. Well, the stem of the romaine lettuce, if we left it in the ground, it would turn hard and it would be bitter. It's therefore called moror, bitter herbs. This is symbolic of how the Egyptians treated the Jews. At first, it was all nice and crisp and light and wonderful. And then it turned really cruel and bitter when the Jews were enslaved all those years ago. OK, so I've used this uh, seder plate. Let me use another seder plate for the charoset. Let me see if I can find the charoset. Here it is, the charoset. What was the charoset? Well, the charoset was a special dip consisting of mashed fruit. And we add wine and cinnamon to make it clay coloured, similar to the clay which Bnei Israel had to use to construct the buildings in Egypt, the pyramids or the storehouses or whatever they did. And they had to provide their own um, straw to make these um, uh, storehouses. And the name Charoset is also related to Cheres, which means clay. Moreover, we prepare it from fruits to which the Jewish nation is likened, such as apples and nuts, if you don't have um, intolerance to nuts, that is. Um, so the Charoset also reminds the Bnei Israel's merits in Mitzrayim. Okay, I've used that Seder plate. Let's have a look. This is another one that Chloe did when she was little. It's a sort of a plastic, heavy plastic one, and you can paint it. So that's a lot of fun. Let's have a look and see if I can find the carpus. There it is, carpus bit difficult to see, but that's all the fun of doing your own Seder plate. Carpus. She was very little when she did this. Carpus is, in my case, parsley, but carpus could be radish, um, it could be potato, it could be any vegetable that has what bracha? Bere peri ha'adama. Any of those vegetables, and you cut the vegetable into small pieces so that each one is less than the size of the kazayat. If we're not sure of that, we ask our rabbis. Okay, I've used that one. Salt water, I'm just going to show you the salt. Imagine the water, mix it together and make it ready so that everybody can have some. Okay, what else can I use? Well, I'm looking for my zo'a. I'm looking for the shank bone a roasted bone, in memory of the Korban Pesach, the Pesach offering, which was eaten at the Seder during the time of the Bet HaMikdash. On the 10th of Nisan, all the Jewish people were told to take a lamb or a goat. Uh, the lamb was the Egyptian god, and to tie it to their doorpost in their bed or whatever, and then to shecht it, to eat that um, roasted lamb on the night of Pesach. The word zroah hints to zroah natuya, the outstretched arm with which Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. And we don't eat the zroah during the Seder because we do not want to give the impression that we're actually eating a Korban Pesach. We don't have the Bet HaMikdash anymore. For the same reason, we don't eat or serve roasted meat or chicken on either Seder night. Instead, we can have meat or chicken another way. Okay, and how about the beitza? The last thing, the beitza, what's that for? Well, in previous videos, I've explained it was for the korban chagiga, the hard-boiled egg, for the festival offering. The meat of that offering was eaten by each family at night before they ate the korban pesach. Goodness, a lot of eating during the time of the Bet HaMikdash. Okay, let's see if we can remember all the bits of the Seder plate. Are you ready? So I'm going to call the shank bone. Do you remember what the shank bone was called in Hebrew? It was called the zroa, the shank bone. And I'm going to put that where it belongs. Done. I'm going to call the parsley. Could be potato, could be a radish, any vegetable that's got very prihadama. Here it is. Here's the carpus dipped in the salty water and put it down. I'm going to call the egg. Here it is, the beitza, which was to commemorate the korban chakiga, which was eaten before the korban pesach, and it was an extra korban because it was yontif. 
stuck it down. Here you go. I'm going to call the bitter herbs. And there is two types. I've got my horseradish, one type, and I've got my romaine lettuce, the other type, marar and chazeret, whichever way round you want it. So, and the last one, I'm going to have my haroset, my chopped fruits and nuts, if I'm not allergic to nuts, in wine, which is reminding me of the cheres, the clay that the Jews used when they were enslaved in Egypt for 210 years. They got out early, we count it from when Yitzchak was born, and here is my Seder plate. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Seder table and the Seder plate. Listen to your mummies and daddies and do what they say. Listen to your mummies and daddies, please don't forget to pray. Listen to your mummies and daddies, our rabbis lead the way. Then they will be happy. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.